Well, hello YouTube and welcome to the Wolf Den. This is Captain Dave's Sport Fishing YouTube channel, Jacksonville, Florida. And it's that time of year. June 1 is right around the corner. And that's usually the stereotypical time when you start, uh, me personally, I start getting almost every trip is four people and they're out for big whopper fish. But we can't always, you know, do that in the river by any means. It's that time of year that me, I mean, other guys, I mean, they talk about, oh man, I can't, oh man, this is my favorite time of year. Which in all reality, if you've been ever studying my channel or been been uh, around a while, this is not my favorite time of year. My actual favorite time of year is more like eh, November, December, January, February. I would rather be trout fishing, float rigging. That's what I, me as a fisherman, would rather be doing. But what I got here is the shark gear. The old running and gunning behind the shrimp boats. Now, this time of this year, we'll see how it goes. Because it's a lot different than going to the jetties and anchoring up and, and fishing there. When I'm doing that running and gunning behind the shrimp boat, my engine doesn't turn off the whole time we're out there. And I'm using so much more fuel. So I do not know if we're going to be doing how much we'll be doing of that this summer. Because, of course, I have to charge a pretty much a substantial extra fuel charge. But I'm sitting here going over my main run and gun behind the shrimp boat tackle. If you've been around, you've seen it before. But just for entertainment purposes maybe, if you've got nothing else to do, this is the rigs that I use. Now, I see guys out there, oh, man, they're, in my opinion, they're doing it all total backwards. I do not like how some people are doing it. Shark fishing with kingfish rigs, little trebles and wire, kingfish rods. I don't like that. Number one, it takes too long to get one of the sharks to the boat. Number two, they just reach over and just start cutting the hooks. They just cut them. They just leave them in them. They don't care. I use 10 aught mustads because we're using a big chunk of bait. We're emulating fish coming off the shrimp boat. Shrimp boat is chugging along dragging nets on the bottom and we get right up behind them over top of the nets the nets are going to be underneath my boat and i'm behind the shrimp boat i've got an entire playlist of offshore and and shark fishing um, i'll put a link below to the to the entire playlist where you can see how we do it and the reason you sort of do it is it's because it's it's going out, you know, outside the inlet. Yeah, it can be, you might have to go two to four miles. Who the, who the heck knows? You might have to run way north or way south, wherever the shrimpers are. And you always want to, if you can, get behind, you know, uh, you want several boats kind of working in area. One will be going that way. One will be going that way so you can hit them. And they don't care. You know, they don't, they don't care. I mean, you're not bothering them. They're chugging along, doing their thing. 
Because the first question out of out of uh, customers when we do this is, oh, oh, don't they? They don't want you here. Well, maybe they don't want us here, but it's not like they can do anything about us pulling up behind them. I mean, the difference is, is when you do this in the Gulf of Mexico, let's say Louisiana or something, you pull up behind shrimp boats and you catch cobia, you catch blackfin tuna, bonita, king mackerel, where when we do it, it's pretty much just sharks. I mean, I get people all the time that ask me out there, you hook your tarpon? I can count how many tarpon I've seen behind a shrimp boat on one hand, you know, that I, I actually see. If I was a tarpon, I wouldn't want to be anywhere near those sharks. Many times, the behind the shrimp boat, it's absolutely loaded with dolphins. It's dolphins and sharks, dolphins and sharks. That's, that's pretty much what it is. You have your smaller sharks, and then you have your black tips and your spinners. That's what we're wanting. When I take somebody out there, I'm telling them, I want you to join the 100 pounder club. You're gonna get a 100 pound, I want a 100 pounder. Because that 100 pounder is gonna absolutely whoop the average person's butt. Because they're not, they don't know what to expect. You're from Iowa and you know, you caught a four pound bass, well, Take a look at this. There's a 10 knot mustad that obviously I pulled out of a fish's face, out of a shark's face. I crimp the barbs down because I pull the hooks out. You know, it's just one thing I can do, you know, sort of. So these, these sharks ain't swimming around with that in their mouth. All right. But that hook is bent. Commonly, these will bend a 10 knot mustad. Now, I've got bigger and I've got heavier hooks, but they're much more expensive hooks. And I, I've got a, you know, a box of like 500 of these or something. And I go down to 90 pound plastic coated cable. Now, you can see right there. That plastic is just chewed up from the shark. All right, and I crimp it. And I do what I call a safety on here. And I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it. I've done another video on it. Is how I double loop around and then go up and put a crimp in it. Now, my old sea daddy taught me that. Well, Captain Randall, this guy commercially shark fish, long lining, he knew a thing or two. And I, you know, I'm glad every day that we were good friends. And he showed me a lot. And the reason that you do this loop through and then go to your crimp is for one, basically one reason. If your crimp ever pulls out, your, your leader pulls out of the crimp because you made the crimp wrong, you were in a hurry, all that stuff, whatever, it just, you know, shit happens. This knot, well, that looping around right there will cinch down on the hook so tight even if this tag end, which is right here, comes out of the crimp. Let's see if I can separate this a little bit. This has been on this rod since last, probably last August. So there you go, it's like a double, and I loop it around. And if this one right here ends up pulling out of the crimp for whatever reason, that pressure of that shark will actually cinch down. And believe it or not, it's happened multiple times in the past that that's pulled 
and we still got the shark to the boat. And the reason being is I might be bouncing around in four foot seas and I'm making up a rig out there or I'm, I'm cutting it here. See, this is very long. I make these pretty long. And then I crimp, I cut it here and then I just do another one with a hook on it to save leader material. Because this stuff isn't you know dirt cheap, right? And it'll pull for whatever reason. And I do the same thing here on the eye. And you can see how I wrap that around and then crimp it. And the reason I do that is because all this is going to always be just on a snap swivel. I got a ball bearing snap swivel there. So this just goes on there. And believe it or not, we've got 100 pounders to the boat where for whatever reason the snap opens and we fought them the whole time with that snap probably open. There's a lot that happens when you're doing the running, gunning, shark fishing. It's a lot of lot of action many times. Fast action. But then again, it has its dead slow moments too. For whatever reason, you just can't seem to hook up any big ones. So that's basically the rig. You can see how long this is. And I usually make it a little extra long so I can cut it back and get the most out of this. So that literally, that hook is bent. I got, like I said, I got heavier hooks, but I don't necessarily want to use them just for like a black tip. Uh, they're big enough hooks that, you know, they can handle a 300 pound shark, let's say. My favorite rod is of course, what you would never think of in a million years as a fantastic shark fishing 100 pounder rod is these ugly stick tiger jigging see it's got the jigging reel seat on it it's i believe it's uh let's see i don't i don't have all this memorized six foot three medium heavy action four to seven ounces and this easily can bring any shark that we catch to the boat and what i'm doing is i'm you know i'm taking the reels off these reel seats are all nasty and these are i've got older ones that don't have the ugly tough guides but these the ugly tough guides and instead of the older ones had a metal gimbal, these got the big old rubber gimbal. So that's a little easier on delicate, you know, bass fishermen. <laughs> you know, they're a little more delicate. Than, uh... So then what I also do, and this is just gee whiz information. Let me pull a little line off here. I do not use braid I've tried it and it's brutal on the angler it's brutal on the actual angler you I'm using basically here I think uh, what is that 40 to 60 pound high vis mono because I want to be able to see you know, this glowing sort of in the sun. And I do this purposely. This is, there's a reason for everything. I go and I do a really big knot. I can't remember what I'm doing here. I do not remember what that knot is, but it's so big that when it goes up to the tip of the rod, you're going to know it. And here is about three foot going to the swivel 
of Mason hardtype nylon 80. It's super stiff. Look how stiff this stuff is. That is Mason hardtype nylon 80 that has been stretched and stretched and stretched. So I use that because it's so abrasion resistant. The Mason hardtype nylon 80 is unbelievable re abrasion resistant. Way more than this. And this is just some cheap you know, Bill Fisher or something. This is this is no big time brand mono here. This yellow mono. Um, I do that for abrasion resistance, and I do the longer leader because I'm bringing these sharks up to the side of the boat with gloved hands, and I need something to hold on to to pull that shark up to the side of the boat and then get the hook out. And I don't have it here, but I use one of those ACR uh, D hookers. It's a long stainless rod with a loop on the end. And what you do, and I've cut multiple, multiple videos about this, is, you know, I run that hook it's open on one end it's kind of like this it's kind of like this and it's open and i run it down and the whole idea is to get this nice and straight you run the d hooker down you don't have any barb i take all the barbs off my hooks i just crush them and you pop the hook out you get your rig back and at the same time that shark is not swimming around with this in his mouth. Just cutting it, I would never ever do that. <clears throat> so that's basically the rig. Now, I've covered these reels before. I do not believe they make these anymore. You know, I am pretty much everybody who knows me on YouTube, knows I am no fan of a pen reel. I'm just not. I'm a, I like Daiwa's. Um, I just like, I don't like old senators and all that. But this is just a super beater reel. And they don't even, I don't believe they make these anymore. And these things are going on maybe their sixth season, six, six years. And that's not a huge reel. It is a thin or sport fisherman. No, a thin or sport fisher ST30. I had 50s at one time. And they were too big. You got to remember, your I got customers that are bass fishermen, non fishermen, whatever, and they're fighting these fish. I got women. Believe it or not, I had a pregnant woman put a hundred pounder to the boat like that one time. A pregnant woman. I think she was like four, three, four months in. She had a definite bun in the oven. Okay, so. These rods mixed with this Finor Sport Fisher reel loaded up with anywhere from 30 to 60, I'll just say. The drags are still good. I mean, the drag has been smashed down on these. I mean, it's, it's, it's not jumping. Look, it's smooth smooth and it, the reels are buttery smooth and I mean years I have been beating these things to an absolute pulp out there they get dust with salt water and they're an aluminum body with a stainless ring very simple 
The reason I got them is they reminded me of the Daiwa Sea Lines. I don't even know the gear ratio. I think the gear ratio on these are, it doesn't even say. I think they were like, you know, three and a half to one or something. But it's a Finor. Finor, I noticed. You know, you it, it gets to the same thing. When you really like something, and then all of a sudden, as soon as you really are enjoying that product, and you say to yourself, geez, I might get another one. I look around, and the only place I can ever even find these for sale is in Australia. What's up, Finor? I mean, Finor started up here. And they started going down here. You know, I don't even believe they make these anymore. Real simple, super positive engagement, star drag, big handle, aluminum body, aluminum side plates. I don't even know, maybe that's a nylon graphite side plate. It doesn't matter, they work, they work. Um, I mean, I've got $500 Jiggy Master Reels. And these work just as good or better for catching the sharks. So that's what I'm doing right now. I am kind of going through this because here comes that Memorial Day holiday. Now, if people want to pay to go out and do it, it's going to cost them more. You know, um, but it's a good time where everybody usually gets a serious chance and then once everybody gets wore out we you know mosey on out back to the jetties or if it's nice do a little head offshore and do some king fishing try to get a couple kings so i'm putting my downriggers on the boat tomorrow i don't actually put my downriggers on the boat but I put the swivel bases. That's what I'm going to be doing tomorrow. Tomorrow morning, out in the boat shed, and I literally bolt them on, and they will be there till late September when it's all over. I don't even bother that, because then I start getting back into the inshore fishing where it's a lot better. So, there you go. Finor. Sport Fisherman, Ugly Stick, Medium Heavies. You know, you need flex on a rod. If the rod doesn't have any flex against some big, heavy, you know, 100 pound shark, let's say, all you're doing is you're gonna beat yourself up, or me, I'm gonna just be beating up the guy or the woman or the kid or whoever is trying to reel in this fish in this sharks are sharks sharks ain't fish every once in a time every once in a while i even call them fish they're not fish that's what my old sea daddy cat Randall always used to say is sharks are sharks sharks ain't fish and he's dead right they're not fish everybody thinks everything swimming in the atlantic ocean is a fish and it isn't <laughs> Now here's what always upsets me. I'll show you something here that I get very, very, very upset about. And you can possibly see it. See the cuts in my foam grip? That's from the hot rod dudes who think having the rod here and they're pulling back and they think, they think Squeezing down on this with their thumb is going to help them with the drag. Well, all you're doing is ruining my rod. Don't do that against a shark or something because this mono is cutting slices in here. Tighten the drag a little bit. That's all you got to do. The drag is a tool that a good angler is always aware of too much too little just right 
And then the wonderful thing about, see, I, that's the reason I hate spinning reels, is the wonderful thing about all conventional and bait casters is all you have to do is this right here. Just put a little bit of thumb pressure on it. That's it. On a spinner, you gotta like put your damn hand, hand down underneath it, try to cut the spool and all that. You're already right there. Your hands are here. You ought to be able to just go put your thumb on it, just a hair. Now I've put my thumb on it before and I burned yellow into my skin right off the motto. We've all done that before. So it seems like everything's in one piece still. By the time I'm done this summertime stuff, I mean, I'm not all that into it myself as a angler. I'm not that much into it. It's something I have to do because we really here in Jacksonville don't have much of an inshore fishery in the heat of the summer. We really don't. I mean, I'd have to do a lot of trekking that's more and more and more boat riding and less fishing. So it gets tough. It gets real tough. It's funny around here how all the inshore gurus turn into offshore gurus the minute the fishing gets tough inshore. They can't handle it. Oh, 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 we got to go offshore. Got to go offshore. I thought you were an inshore guru. I thought you were God's gift to inshore river jetty fishing. But they're not really. They're just going with the flow. So, <coughs> so that's some of the tackle I'm using. I've got plenty of videos all about this. If you're even more interested, I will put a link to below to the entire playlist. Entire playlist. Actually, a couple. If you want to look at how I make the knot, um, let's see, what else? Oh, yeah, how I make the, um, uh, here we go. Oh, I make this knot down here, and I have a little tutorial, I believe, about crimping correctly and crimping wrong. And a lot of guys out there are going to say, well, I'm not going to use this. I'm going to use single strand. Single strand piano wire. Well, number one, that's not as strong as this. It, it can't flex like this. Our sharks fly through the air doing this. Corkscrewing. What, single strand wire does not take kindly to that. But this, it works. And I buy it in a big old spool on Amazon or at a local tackle shop. And I buy the crimps. Then I got the crimpers, and it's, and it's not as dangerous either. I kind of always felt that shark fishing with single strand wire, eh, on the dangerous side. You better be careful that if you have to handle that shark, when you're anywhere down there next to that single strand wire, I mean, that stuff will... It'll slice you like a, it'll slice you like a cod. So I always use this, 90 pound and it works. I got tons and tons of proof that this works great. So that's all I can do is put that out there. So thanks for watching, thanks for stopping by and yep, here comes another summer season. A summer season that you really don't even know what's around the corner these days. Let's go, Brandon. <laughs>